Hi everybody and welcome back to another game here at Age and Bison. We got another 2v2 here with two, or I should say two teams of, for us, relatively competitive players. We've got uh, Crab Got, Pixel Buggy, um, We Love Ironheart, known as Coleoid, and Lopsided Fluff, who are names that are probably known throughout the community. Um, I'm also joined today by McCleaves. How's it going, McCleaves? Yeah, I'm uh, doing well. Uh, really excited to see those players. We we really love most of them. Uh, very active players in the community, also joining most of the streams, uh, and uh, oh, very fun fun to hang out with overall. But also, they're pretty. They have good skills. Exactly. You know, these may not necessarily be pros, but these are definitely people that can execute, you know, higher strategy within the game with a good deal of fidelity. So I'm looking forward to what should be quite the competitive uh, team game today. Um, I've seen the crap about play today and it, it, he's very good with camp. Let's just put it that way. Okay. So I'll make sure to try to keep an eye on that as we cast. And without further ado, let's get into it. All right. So here on the left side, we've got lopsided fluff is blue. Uh, looks like we already have. I go Grins, you Grins. go Musk. Um, for those okay. that don't know, too, that's an Ottoman. <laughs> we Suicide Bomber. Ottoman uh. Grenadiers are known as Humbarchi. They're a little bit different than your standard Gren, um, with more multipliers against buildings and artillery, but lower range resist. So, interesting. For here on the right, we've got Pixel Buggy as Malta, and Crab got as France. Um, McCleaves, any thoughts on the sieves and sieve combos? Mm. Well, the France mirror, you know, it's always about who's going cav and who isn't. Um, and if France is mirroring, you, you don't necessarily expect them to go cav both, to both go cav. That's actually something that quite, uh, quite often happens that one of the players chooses to do something else. Mm. And Especially with E, well, we already saw that Ultimates is not going to make Delhi, but that would have been a good choice. Uh, I don't really expect Pixel to go Cav, so maybe in the end we will see a, a France Cav mirror um, this time. Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. You know, France is very. And also, well this known. map. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, sorry, just go ahead. I was going to say France is known for its semi FF with Hussar, especially in team games. And oh, we got a little bit of a skirmish here. And what were you going to say about this map? Well, no one likes it. <laughs> yeah, this That's is basically it. <laughs> yeah, you know, especially well, in team it's maps. It's about the space, the, the you know, the the resource distribution, the little center island with, you know, it's it's not great for a fort base, but it is also not great for defense because. You just don't have a lot of space and resources in the base. So it's really hard to take more on this one. Yeah. Uh, and and yet you kind of have to. Exactly. This is definitely a map that favors aggression, taking the center spot and, you know, again, the trade line with only three options with four players all benefiting from a TP. Um, it yes. does lock out certain strategies. So taking a look at the deck, we're going to start here with Fluff. Uh, pretty standard French deck. Nothing out of here really stands out other than the addition of the new team ranged infantry. Uh, no, wait, that one's always been there. It's sorry, this one ranged no, infantry. No, no, it's hit new. Points. Oh, yeah, that, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you're right. It just got renamed. But, um, yeah, otherwise, there's nothing new. Well, maybe the, um, the cigar rollers, but that's like a late game card. Correct. Uh, yeah. Also, interesting to note that the Crab God was locked out of the TP. That is correct. So that will kind of affect his timings. Um, yeah, and it looks like no market either yet. So we'll, we'll see what he ends up doing, but he is going to be slower. Uh, it looks like for Ottoman, we have a pretty standard Ottoman team deck. Um, yeah. You know, Malta, Bo Pike. Okay, that kind of gives you a hint of what we might have be seeing. Oh, he's got the here. churches? Yeah, you know, well, the churches. Well, it gives a hint. Right. Well, the churches are... You know, they kind of go in and out of favor. They definitely have some advantages. Uh, in this case, it'll really help him get an XP curve. Malta's kind of slow to roll, especially if it's doing a pike bow rush. It won't have much eco behind it. So, you know, it's a way to overcome the initial deficit. But I'm really curious. I like the way he's placed his churches, too. Um, it, it looks pretty defensive. Also, his deck is, like, full of defensive stuff, forts. Um, I was just wondering, he, he's got that... Uh, Fixed cannon in H4, that card. Does it do anything besides giving a fixed cannon? Because otherwise it's just, you know, yeah, that's just an H3 card in H4. It's kind of odd. 
it's team. Oh, it's team. Okay, sorry, I didn't, I didn't see that. Yeah. yeah. So that, that makes sense. Yeah. He, so he's ready to pike bow rush, then bunker down, and then last but not least, of course, Crab got's French deck. You know, this is a little bit more of a greedy, uh, especially for two v two, right? We don't have a lot of oh, unit absolutely. shipments. Um, yeah. it's none. No, we have the two Falks, but I mean, even down to the covered oh, yeah. wagon. I, I would gather that he's trying to test out a more greedy build or a deck that's probably more teched for 3v3s, right? Because, you know, 2v2s are basically glorified 1v1s in many ways. Yeah, he does have a lot of Cav cards, though. And also uh, the new infantry card, just like Lopsided. Mm. All right, so let's see what we got. We got an artillery foundry coming down, and for Ottoman... We have a one barracks coming down, two barracks coming down for like two barracks. So it looks like a double yes. musk. Uh oh. Oh, what's this? Wait, no. Oh, oh. these are two barrackses. Oh, this is a double rack. <laughs> this is this is not the same player. <laughs> just, those, those forward bases are just right in there together. We might. <laughs> I love it. Okay, this just got spicy. <laughs> So we have two, the Battle of the Forward Bases is about to commence. Oh, yeah. Like, any unit that can, that comes out after the opponent's units. Oh, uh, and the Humbarachi are going to be right so, so incredible here because of the higher siege damage they do to buildings. Yes. And the question is, who's got the first units out? I'm going to go with Ottoman, it would appear. It looks like Malta to me, actually. Malta's units seem to train really quickly look at that oh yeah right at the same time but they the musket countered yeah vills oh, that, that, that is going to work though mm -hmm. yeah the vills have to run of course oh oh look at them flying oh, i love the water graphics it is it's quite the beautiful game but it's also going to be tough for um malta especially the crossbows look to be training really quickly now compared to the rest of the units here. It's true. Uh, if I remember correctly, Expo do come out a little bit quicker. But if this hospital goes down, that's really going to set these guys back. Yeah, and the Humbarachis have quite a good range, so they might actually... Oh, and there's an, another pop. There it is. It's down. Yeah, it looks like now it's up to Elaine Morgan. Oh, building a D... Oh, no! His depot instantly nukes down. Out. Yeah. Now, shout out Did to... Did he get the to, uh, back at least? No, no. If your stuff goes down, it's spent. Mm -hmm. um, real fast, too. A shout out to the campaign with Elaine Magnan. Who I'm probably pronouncing horribly wrong, so... Hello, <laughs> Magnon. Yeah. Oof. All right, so now... Just forget that. The forward bases are down. This is kind of an interesting spot, right? Both players... Uh, I'm sorry, both teams attempting to do forward aggression. What do you do now if you're in the situation of Crab God and Pixel Buggy? Well, he's already rebuilding, and um, Pixel is obviously sending the crossbow card. Mm -hmm. So I, th I think you've lost, especially for Malta, you've only lost 100 wood. Um, it's not the big deal. For France, maybe a bit more of that. And this is a quite potent unit mass with the Humberachi doing um, immense damage with uh, with the siege. That is correct. I mean, even more so than your He's typical... He's going to save it right away. Yep. I mean, they do more damage against buildings than even typical uh, grenadiers, so... Yes. This part... Ooh, perfect timing, though. Does get oh! the house out. Oh, well, that was tight. <laughs> I, I love that. He's going to lose them though, but uh, it was a good, it was a good pop. Wow, pretty intense fight. Yep, back. So smartly deciding it's not worth it to continue to fight under the town center and with reinforcements swarming in. Look at all those crossbows from Malta. They did force Minutemen and destroy a house and a stable. So they did basic, basically they they did. Pretty decent damage. Uh, French explorer coming in with the snare here and potentially getting off some more shots for the for the crossbows. So let's see what Ottoman's doing. I mix some hus. Yep. So 
Huntsman. Who's going to go the Hus then? We know that like I said, currently Ottoman have a very powerful unit in the Delhi, but it looks like they're going to keep it safe. And France is going to be making Hussar next. And again, even though these yeah. are Grenadiers and they are sort somewhat fast, they are weaker mm -hmm. against crossbow or light infantry skirmisher type of units. So, and they can be quite kind of. Um, this is a very big mass of crossbows as well. It's it's really good. And look at the score too. Exactly. Uh, I think Crabcott just needs a little bit of time to get back, but not much. And he's he, it looks like he's going to go up. And actually, lopsided is too. So we'll have two French players in H3 very soon. That is correct. All right, so, and he's aging with the Exiled Prince for the fast age up. He's got a shipment banked, so I would expect to see probably two Falks. Although that, no, actually, I'm going to take that back because two Falconets, again, these Humbarachi do counter Falconets, so that would be pretty risky. Um, to be honest, I don't know. It would be interesting what Crab God sends. Ah, look at Pixel Buggy's eco, too. It is just humming. Oh, if they get this TC, they might cancel the agent. Ooh, but I think he's going to be able to pull it off in time. Oh, yeah, there it is. Starts queuing up skirms immediately. In interesting. This isn't something you would typically see from France. Again, if there's a French main, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it does seem a bit greedy in the face of all that pressure. But perhaps he's thinking, look, I've been hit pretty hard, so you know I need to get, be a little bit greedier in order to get back into the game. So we'll see if his gamble yeah. pays off. I think it's probably the right choice right now, um, especially since, well, the opponent's team isn't really in a position to win outright you know they need a bit more mass Ooh. so he might have the time to actually get back before that yeah. oh these hills that, that kind of hurts yeah look how much time it takes to actually take down one cdb with so many musketeers it's insane how tanky those are it's true you know it's one of france's uh civilization bonuses that they have a stronger faster gathering settler but it does cost a bit more uh food to make 120 if i remember correctly Why am I asking? I can probably just look. No, I can't. Yeah, we got some walls up. So, I mean, again, if you're Malta too, you have no problem going in the late game. So, Ottoman or Civ kind of known to be on a bit of a timer. So, I expect both uh, Lopsided Fluff and Coleoid, aka We Love Iron Hat, to try to figure out a way to kind of close this game out before it goes too long. Yeah. Ooh, uh, perfect timing. Okay. The three Delhi get popped by uh, goons. Actually, it's... it looks like the Umbrachi are taking pretty good trades right now, though. Although they're much more expensive, also, of course. That shouldn't be the problem. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just like that. <laughs> these look these units look, look beautiful yeah yes they do what a cool and Malta really needs to kite that oh but there's a big shipment or is that Jaegers or um Skirms that he, he's got there Skirms is the perfect answer to Humber Edgies because they can kite them very easily that is correct uh, they just need to make sure they've got enough anti-cav oh and there's the cannons mm-hmm It looks like there's some hustling. What the opponents don't know is that there's another TC. Exactly. You know, everyone's just kind of, you know, settling in for what might be a long game while at the same time trying to keep pressure up. And oof, yep, Crab God sees those Falks. He wisely backs off. But, I mean, this is a dangerous spot because they have so much light infantry that they don't really have too much to deal with the cannons. It's sad to see that Crabcock didn't manage to repair his TC. 
Uh, probably just didn't have to go for it, but he, he's got another one, so he... And there it is, it's down. Yep. Oh, and he was able to get the wood out, so right, so he should be able to build another one here shortly. Uh, yeah, he's got enough wood. Mm. More than enough. Oh, oh, those, those curious ears. Okay. Yeah, and, they, and, their skin is behind them to back it up, so that's okay. He's probably trying to bait them, actually. But those falcons are still a big problem. Like, how do you get rid of that? It's correct. Oh, this is a good catch by Malta, though, with the pikes. He's, mm -hmm. he's getting all the curious ears. Exactly. That's great. I mean, he's losing a lot Sacrifice. of pikes, but... It's worth it down. when you consider well, how it's, cheap. It's worth the sacrifice, I think. Yeah. Well, when you have such a cheap unit, uh, like Malta does with pikes and crossbow, you can afford yeah. to take casualties. And oh, he got the goons on oh, the back. Oh, no. Oh, that's huge. Oh, now they have falcs of their own. And this it's... is and this is a really bad fight for uh, Bob Sider and his teammates. Yeah. Oh. That... Already, the, the game just turned around there. Instantly, yep. I mean, within what? Probably 15, 20 seconds. The entire mass for lopsided and coleoid got deleted. And so, what do you do from here it's now if impressive. you're um, lopsided fluff and coleoid? Oh, there you go. There's the answer. Remass, I ship Spahi. When in doubt, Spahi out, right? Yeah, although I think Abus might actually be better, but uh, Spahi are probably a good idea too. Uh, France is going to get a lot, of, is going going to get a lot of threat dragoons, and especially when you see how much uh, score France has, even though he was the one being pushed, or uh, crap off France, of course. Um, it's really quite impressive. Mm. And he still has his double TC in the end, because he's rebuilding the old one. And we got Fluff being chased off of Hunts here. Um, there's a few that kind of back herded into the corners of the map up here, but do they even see that? You know, that's the issue with this map, really. You run out of food so quickly, and then if you don't have okay. good map control, you're you're going to be in big trouble. And it's hard to really build map control stuff, because, you know, try to find space for TC on those little islands. Uh, okay. There is space, but it's not a lot, and it's really hard to... Yeah, take control of the resources. Correct. It's definitely an open map, and again, it favors uh, aggression absolutely. and map control, which can be just absolutely brutal, especially in a team setting, like you said. It's probably... It, it was made for 1v1 uh, and added to the team pool. So we got the Karasi. This is some good trade here. Now he needs to back off. I don't... I don't know. Spahi. Yep. Ooh. Spahi connecting onto the skirms. Was this a team shipment? No, it wasn't. No, the well, team shipment's age four. Regardless, it's going to do enormous damage. It does. Damage. But he doesn't want to lose this by either. That's, that's one thing. Mm -hmm. There's no anti cattle left. Now there's Sunder guns, I guess. Yeah, but I must say, even with the spa, he's putting in some serious work. It is looking like uh, Pixel Buggy and Crab Got, they have more of their mass retained. Well, Applet lost basically all of it, but Pixelbird still has a big mass. Correct. And again, uh, has Steel Bolts come in? Not yet. No, he's got Archaic Combat, I think, there. It looks like it. Yes, which he probably sent during the Long Age, too. Um, yeah. Uh, no, it's an H3 card, but... Oh, the fifteen fifteen, yes. Oh, we could check that, I guess, but uh, nope. regardless of, of what he, what he sent, he didn't send anything, okay? He just sent the two um, H2 cards. Okay, uh, Malta is in a pretty good position. Um, and even his teammate, I, th I think, has an eco advantage on, on, on the other fronts because he got two TCs earlier. Correct. And he's got more map control, right? He hasn't been idle as long. Uh, yes. And we see uh, Ottoman is going to switch into Avis now. Ooh, there goes the coin mine. 
Yeah, tough. And this looks like Steel Bolts is in now. Oh, not yet, oh, but it's I'm being wrong. sent. Uh, you know, it's the same animation, yes. but the HP bar of the opponent's building will go down much faster. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, it looks like they've already been forced onto mills. Oof, this is a tough spot. You know, and this is always the risk of rushing. You know, a lot of people, especially at the lower elos, rushes seem like the ever-present and perhaps even more successful strategy. But as players' micro and APM increases, you know, rushing becomes harder to recover from than defending. Not that yeah. rushes aren't always viable, and especially in 2v2s, they can be very viable. But, uh, you know... I think it's starting to look pretty rough here for Lopsided Fluff and Iron Hat. I definitely agree. This is bad. Um, he can, of course, kite a little bit, but these crossbows are no joke. That's correct. He's got pikes for siege and on being, top of it. Yeah, being confined to your base for resources is, is not something you want. I think GG, yep. Yeah. It's a... It was a good game. It was a very interesting start. And the GG being called. And, and somehow, I'm, I'm still not entirely sure how they pulled that off. Uh, it, it was it was a very interesting, interesting turnaround, really. Well, you know... When you think about it, right, like if you're the defender, right, and this is why, especially at higher elos and um, tournament level, right, you tend to see less rushes and more either semi-FF or pure FF play, right? So Crap got here, but he was under incredible pressure, right? Uh, most of us would have probably been very emotional or, or, or overloaded, right, trying to defend all these things. He was getting pushed off hunts early on. You know, he had to move his eco around constantly, all while, you know, defending and kiting against a larger mass. But when you think about it, like, you're under the TC, so you're doing damage from that. Your shipments pop out faster, right? Um, and on top of it, we have Malta. Malta is a sieve, well, very weak in 1v1s. Um, well, I shouldn't say weak, but has lots of weaknesses. But in a 2v2, where, you know, Falk timings are a little bit more rare, th this sieve is incredibly solid if it can get grounded and with all of its eco upgrades i mean you have what a 30 percent uh yep 30 percent work rate around most of your buildings on top of settler wagon nope no german tongue so uh, but just even that in and of itself is very strong so it's very interesting to see a build without german tongue actually mm -hmm. especially in a team game that's true but but it, it probably it, it probably paid off because when you see the the this amount of crossbows he had in age two that was really uh, impressive that's correct you know and, and that's again you know good team strategy one person tries to get an age advantage right and use you know uh units like skirmishers which are in a way shadow tech right instantly being veteran upon uh, yes. being available in age three um and cannons to really overdo that mass i i really liked the humbarachi musk combination but also part of it you know with both people putting a forward base here um, a lot yeah. of the surprise element uh, was probably taken away. So I think good games from everybody involved. It was definitely very close. You know, if they would have nuked this town center a few seconds earlier, um, if they'd been able to remove the crossbows maybe a bit more, uh, I think without a doubt lopsided and Coleoid would have been able to take that over. So take a quick look through the post game. Um, most res. France and of course you know Ottoman how usually have less res but they don't have to pay for villagers so it's a bit deceptive yeah it is and also their units are stronger so I mean there's also something you, you don't really take that into account when you look at the eco but you do trade better usually which also does actually mean something for the eco Oh, absolutely. I mean, look at the kill-death ratios here. I mean, for... Exactly. If you looked at just this screen, if somebody tuned in and saw this, they would not expect, you know, that it would be this team that won and not this team. Yeah. Just based on military. Yeah, but mass also means something, you know. When you've got 160 multi crossbows in, in front of you, you can try to do whatever you, you want, but it's going to be tough nonetheless. Yeah. You know, and it looks like, I mean... Uh, lopsided fluff and Kodalaid both had the stronger economies, but I think it came down to the timings, you know. And again, that's what really separates often 
um, the higher echelons of players versus scrubs like myself, right? Is the understanding of timings and being able to put the better unit composition into the opponent at the right time. You know, uh, Age of Empires 3 is such a game about what often is called tempo. And I think this is a great example of tempo swinging both ways, right? And how to recover when you've lost your tempo in the case of Team Pixel Buggy. So, um, you know, again, res were equal. The, the kill-death ratio was actually higher, right, for lopsided fluff most of the game, and they had a huge advantage here. And then just one bad fight... Yeah, that's absolutely horrifying. All right, followed by, you know, another bad fight. But, you know, it's like garbage time in sports, right? So, doesn't But at that point, they, they're already, you know, they're already outmatched. But the first fight, they weren't. Exactly. Eco was kind of, you know, roughly the same um, for both teams. So, I guess Lopsided was ahead most of the time until the end. And uh, when he was basically forced out of... Um, forced off the map of the resources. That is correct. You, you really see it when you look at the food the food curve, yes. And I think with that, that just about wraps everything up. McCleaves, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, well played to both of the teams. Really surprising uh, forward-based choice. Uh, and other than that, just really... It really shows how defensive play how strong defensive play can be i think it's exactly. even when you're challenged by grenadiers you know which is something entirely different than just regular units because it's it because of the siege damage exactly well i hope for those watching that you enjoyed this cast um you're all adults you know how the whole like and subscribe thing works and if you want to do it or not um I, I really enjoyed this. Like I said, I think this is a good example of, you know, again, 2v2s, which are kind of a sweet spot between a full team game and a 1v1. Um, yeah. How coordination and tempo and the, and the kind of the back and the forth can be utilized to take a very threatened position in the case of Team Pixel, Buggy, and Crab God, uh, you know, into a pretty convincing win there at the end. Ooh, looks like we got some cheeky deli raids coming in. So, all right. Thanks, everyone, for joining and we hope to see you next time.